Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Suroshan Patina. Welcome to another video. I keep discussing on a lot of fertility content and if that is something that interests you, do consider subscribing. In this video, I am going to explain on how you can improve your chances of implantation after an embryo transfer in an IVF or an ICSI cycle. If you have already undergone an embryo transfer, I would like you to skip to the timeline over here. But if you have not yet undergone an embryo transfer, do continue watching. Well, the very first point is a no-brainer. Always choose a clinic with a doctor who has a very good experience in infertility. And also do not go to a clinic just because it is very near to your house. Choose a clinic who has good reviews with all the patients. So do your research before you go ahead and start looking for a clinic. Infertility treatment is like a journey involving the couple and the treating doctor. So it is always important you choose the right doctor for your particular treatment. Make sure that you and your doctor are in sync before you go ahead and start treatment. I have previously made a video on how you can choose your fertility clinic so do check it out after you finish this video and to summarize all of it in a nutshell choose a clinic where they do not do batches and where the doctor individualizes the treatment for you. A hystoscopy before your embryo transfer in the previous cycle can be very beneficial in several ways. It can help us diagnose any abnormality inside the uterine cavity. If any abnormality is found, it can be corrected in the same setting. We can also get a biopsy from the endometrium and at the same time an endometrial scratch can be performed. An endometrial scratch may have an improved chances of an implantation. If you want me to make another video on endometrial scratch, do let me know in the comments down below. Couples can also consider going in for a frozen embryo transfer rather than a fresh transfer because it can help us prepare the endometrium much better for the implantation of the embryo. Endometrial receptivity assay, also known as the ERA biopsy, is being done for patients who are a little bit older and suffering from recurrent implantation failures where a small biopsy of the endometrium is sent to know the exact window of implantation. Recurrent implantation failure is a whole different subject. I have already made a video on that, so do check it out once you're done with this video. Certain clinics have been using embryo glue, which is nothing but hyaluronic acid, to hopefully make the embryo stick inside the uterus. But unfortunately, this cannot be recommended for all the patients because there is no study showing that there is a significant difference between people who are using embryo glue and for the people who are not. The very first thing that you should do to improve your chance of implantation is to make sure you are on progesterone. Most clinics will put you on a progesterone but if it is only a vaginal progesterone make sure that you take a oral or an injectable progesterone as well because studies have shown that just being on vaginal progesterone is not enough. Some or most of our Indian women have the luxury of being able to stay at home after their embryo transfer so make full use of this opportunity, make sure you are watching something funny make sure you keep your mind off the fact that you had an embryo transfer I know it is easy for me to say but try to do that that is the only way of how you can make sure you are completely happy and this will definitely improve our chance of implantation unfortunately there are no studies to show that one particular diet might be beneficial for implantation but a Mediterranean diet has been shown that it can be beneficial to many women mostly in their perimenopausal and postmenopausal age and it can be definitely useful for somebody who has also undergone an embryo transfer. Make sure you are eating healthy, stay away from junk food and processed food. Make sure you are staying away from sweets because that is definitely detrimental for you. And supplementation may or may not be required. You can always take folic acid and vitamin D if required. Please try to avoid drinking and alcohol during this period because we all know the detrimental effects of it. Try to keep your caffeine intake also to a minimum. Try to live for the moment. Do not think about the past. Don't think about the future. Try not to think about the things you have absolutely no control about. Do everything and anything that can keep you relaxed. It can be anything from yoga, meditation, physiotherapy, acupuncture, group exercises. Uh, try to keep the exercises also to a minimum. We don't want you to exert too much during this period. So try to find out that one thing that makes you happy and go full on into it. 
understand that infertility is a couple issue it's not something that a woman has to undergo alone so make sure that you and your husband are actively involved in trying to make this work i have also made a video on how couples can cope up during this very difficult time so do check it out once you're done with this one there are no studies to show that sex can either have a detrimental effect or a positive effect on the implantation rate so try to keep it to a minimum and finally have a little faith because that will go a long way in improving your implantation rates that's it for our video i hope you found this useful do like share and subscribe to our channel and if you have not already do go ahead and follow me on instagram as well so until the next one guys see you and have a great day